when we were talking about what would you really like to know from the people in the room. So you can take your seats again, that's fine. Because we're going to listen to Nicola and hear some more about his views. Because we're going to talk about the advancement, the progression of technology. And obviously these were just some examples of them. And I'm curious to hear if he noticed anything maybe in the different sides of the room and hear what he has to think about that. Now, he's not afraid of some strong opinions and maybe confront you even with your own skepticism or your own research work, so be ready for that. And afterwards, I would love to hear from you if there are things you agree with, what he is going to tell us, or if you totally disagree with. So if there's anything, write them down and I will get back to that later. But now first, can I have an applause for, of course, the chair of our conference as well, Mr. Nicola Serbeccia. Thank you. <coughs> and thank you for good pronunciation of my name. It's really, <laughs> really. <laughs> okay, so I guess we got a, a very good warm up and I'm awakened as well. I was worried when I came here, it's too early to, to, to talk and then you really did a great job to <laughs> make us so. <laughs> so <coughs> As you can see, uh, my team is uh, with a question mark. So I'd like to explore. It's not so much that I want to tell you. It's more that I really like to discuss with you about digital transformation, what it really is in the time when we are really using processor, uh, which are somehow built in, even hidden, in most of the things that surround us. And it really affects our, our daily life. It, it really changes us. It's, our world is not anymore physical. It's getting really virtual. It's getting uh, uh, really fundamentally different because you don't need to, to, to have things anymore. You, if you have an access right, you are well. So let us examine uh, what, are, what these things really mean and what is really uh, how they affect us. This is something which interests me a lot, not only technically how to achieve something, but also what is the impact of this use of this technology. Because science usually, science is about creating new things, but deploying science means then uh, influencing us as well. And we have to see what is the, the, this uh, little red line uh, where we cross this uh, kind of advances and maybe are degrading ourselves when we exaggerate with this. So, uh, the first question mark is what is uh, digital transformation? I'd like to discuss this with you as well. What does it mean to be ready? Who should be ready? Why? And when? And uh, also I'd like to, to discuss maybe also with you uh, who drives that? Who drives digital transformation? Is it only technology? Are there politicians who want that? Or is it a business behind that? So as you see, I want to raise skepticism here. I want to ask questions. I want to look for answers. Is it ready? What, what is, but this it here stands actually for IT. So that's another question. I want to see, is information technology ready for digital transformation? And also, I'd like to see, are you ready? And this is the questions that we are actually having here. And I'll just pick up some of the, uh, I put it now, when, uh, as you were uh, answering. So I guess you were lying here. Really, I don't trust you. I think you spend more time online than you really said, because sometimes we are not even aware that we are online. When we are using our smartphones, where we think we do something else, we are giving up our dates, our, our data to, to, to Google or Amazon or or whoever, so uh, just think twice when you think when you're doing something to consider really are you online and are you really uh, doing something? And I have a friend, he's really a technology freak. When I asked him this question, he said, I'm online when I sleep. So there are maybe people <laughs> 24 online. Uh, so for the e-vehicle, that's a typical question. When we try to remain our little island of privacy. As the one person here said, it's my comfort zone. I can do in my car, even in the middle of the city, whatever I want. No one is looking at me, and this is one thing, and then your freedom of movement. So, but in another way, uh, e-vehicle service is really a very good service, a very social one. So this is to be considered. Maybe better to be less online, but to take e-vehicle, that's an option. 
then would you place a chip? Of course, not so many people. And uh, it is, I guess it's good that we are so skeptical. And I think we should remain skeptical and maybe we should uh, praise those young uh, uh, boys who are ready to do it. But think twice be before you really do it, because often we don't know what he's doing to us. You know, I remember when I was working many, many years ago in neural networks area, and then we thought, okay, we know everything about neurology, we can do everything. But the problem we had, when you connect uh, some, some uh, electrical device to the biological uh, cell, then either you destroy the cell or cell destroys the electronics. So, I mean, biology and technology, they don't go very well hand in hand. So we should be careful. I think we still have to do a lot there, not to mention other type of impacts. So this is the question we didn't discuss here, but it's really also the very good one. Would you give up uh, money for bitcoins? But not only money, I mean the banks and, and uh, the way how the finance go. Maybe we can later on discuss about this. But this is really one of the crucial uh, questions for digital transformation. Uh, and then uh, also, no. no, very good. I know that in Holland, I mean, bike is uh, really uh, something special. But, but uh, uh, again, younger people, if you have under the skin also an access to online games, would you like to have it? Okay, this is tricky. Anyway, what I want to talk today is about, at one side, about enabling technology, and uh, on the other, I want to uh, bring some uh, dilemmas that this technology is bringing uh, to, to, uh, to us, to society as well, because this technology is really, it's not, uh, it is called disruptive, because it really disrupts the usual way uh, of how things happen. So we have to, to look at this, and we have to also to look to the digital agenda. What is behind it? How we achieve this? And as you see, uh, I put it there, actually, most of the things, if I want to summarize it with one or two words, is to get kind of services for everything. So uh, being digital uh, nowadays means you have a service to do something. So uh, uh, the domains of digital transformation are really all aspects of our life. You go from the business, then you have a corporate dilemma. Do you want to do it di digitally or in an analog way? And you get a business as a service, and I'll discuss it a little bit later also. On uh, Then in the financial strategy, you want to see, uh, would you be progressive or conservative? Do you like to have uh, money or you can do it with Bitcoin? So you maybe you will have a money as a service soon. Uh, or in the politics, you can even have a, a kind of mandate as a service. Uh, maybe we can discuss Trump as well. He's here. Is he coming to this hotel? No. Is Trump coming to this hotel? Um, I think not. Okay, so we can discuss about mandate as a service. Uh, then in industry, you actually you don't have a dilemma now. Everything thing is industry 4.0 is, is the way to go. Then in mass media, uh, uh, you'll see that uh, still uh, there is a difference between cyber and physical things. But I don't know, maybe soon we won't make a difference because technology is really going very fast. In decision making, I, I mean also in philosophy, you know, is it an in silico or in vivo which matters really? Do you trust more to technology or you trust maybe more to the uh, biology? <coughs> And from the social point of view, I mean, there are huge changes nowadays, and maybe this is the most obvious one when we have these uh, mixed feelings about uh, click and emoji and communication, so you get a, a friends as a service, or would you trade your best friend for millions of, uh, of clicks? I mean, th those are the things that we can uh, really consider. So. Uh, when we think about digital transformation, what, what you see is really it's coming. It's really almost like a natural force, you know, when people talk about it. No one is asking whether it will come. I mean, that's something that we, we can't do anything about this. So it's coming. It is on the work. When we sleep, <laughs> when we do, uh, when we exercise, it is everywhere. So, uh, and it's even coming under our skin. So we have to be aware that 
It is more or less here, whether we like it or not. It has this disruptive character, and maybe we should be uh, worried, because does it only disrupt the business, or does it disrupt society? Is it disrupting us, disrupting us as well? So we have really to think uh, twice when we, when we talk about uh, this. And so do we have to adapt to it? I mean, we are very adaptable species, and this is one of the major problems with uh, technology and society and uh, individuals because we are more adaptive than technology. So maybe we uh, see that we are adapting more and more to the technology, which should be adapted to us. Uh, I mean, things are not really uh, maybe going as we would like. So I just want to uh, tackle uh, a lot of uh, areas which are really crucially important for society. Business, finance, government, industry, healthcare, well-being, arts and humanities, and media and entertainment. Those are the I selected major areas of human activities, and just to consider what is the uh, effect that uh, digital transformation have on this. And it's really, it's crucial. It's changing almost everything. Uh, now, that means that when you deploy uh, digital technology in business, then uh, you are affecting how the business is made, how you make your business plans, and uh, how revenues are created. So it really affects most of the the elements of the business. In the finance uh, also, I mean, how you invest money, how you use money, how you trade. Uh, do we need the banks? I mean, we can uh, do most of the things uh, uh, with uh, technology without really our usual institutions. So what will happen? And the governments, I mean, uh, the digital transformation is probably the most present in this domain because we see that most of the aspects of services, uh, utilities, healthcare, you name it, are now digitally enabled. And there are a lot of good things there, I would say. They really prevent us from waiting in queues or we can do things faster or from home. So a lot of actually positive, uh, surprisingly positive examples uh, of the digital transformation of the governance. Uh, and industry is the way really how you produce, how you uh, manufacture, how you automize, how you interconnect. And uh, industry uh, 4.0 is, is a trend, almost sine qua non for, for industry and or any, anyone who wants to be a big player there. So I'll maybe have a few examples there, but this is almost no question what to do there. In the healthcare, it's a tricky thing. Uh, to my uh, opinion. So now, it's really uh, digital transformation affects the, the way how hus hospital works, how the healthcare works, how the, the health insurance work. And uh, also it goes to uh, diagnosis, it goes to, to the cures, and uh, the healthcare uh, is really very much affected. There are a lot of positive examples there. I would say even the, the best examples of the use of technology could be in helping people to overcome some disabilities, maybe. But also there are some negative issues that we can, uh, we can uh, discuss. And uh, if you look to the well-being, now people are getting crazy. Did you notice they are self-optimizing, they are self-measuring. So in the healthcare, it's very present as well. And uh, the, there are so many of these modern variables. You can buy things, you can, uh, you can do something with it. So it's really it's getting more and more popular, and people are getting more and more crazy about this. In the media, it's also very present. Nowadays, we can hardly, hardly uh, differ between the, the augmented uh, reality and reality. So when you look at the news, you're not sure whether you're, it's really you're, you're, you're looking to something which is computer manipulated or you're looking to, to the information. And also uh, the fundamental change is that you're not only a passive user of information. This is thanks to digital transformation. You can get involved and you can also uh, provide information. So there are a lot of communication and interactivity which digital transformation brought into the media. Uh, which one can see as a very positive one. Or you can choose what you want to, to look. So there are, again, good and bad things about this. In humanities, I mean, it's a kind of going very slow, I have to admit. I mean, they are catching up, you know, social science or philosophy. There are uh, some, some thinkers who would really uh, uh, tell you great things about how things are going now in the new world. 
But I think it's not enough. Uh, I think we need uh, them more in this, in, in, in this discussion. And I hope it will come more and more. Uh, so, just I want to uh, make a kind of uh, gradation uh, when we talk about digital transformation. Things can be digitally enabled, they can be online and pervasive, or they are completely transformed. And uh, if you look to what, is, what makes this possible, this is the first thing is digitization. So this is different, it's a little different. Digitalization is something else. Digitization is when you tr uh, transform some analog things to digital, then you digitize it. Uh, and you have to digitize everything, actually. Then uh, digital processing, of course, using computers. Then extension of application domain. You know, uh, most uh, 10, 20 years ago, we have a classical computer application. Nowadays, computers run everything. And of course, these enabling technologies, which, which are nowadays here. So I'll be very fast here because you know all this. Uh, I got some examples for people uh, who maybe don't know how to digitize a number uh, to make it binary and so on. So I'll skip this. Uh, Processing is, of course, we forgot this, but it started with Turing machine. And the thing, and, and I'll stay here a little bit, though you know this, the Turing machine was actually a mathematical logical proof that when you have an algorithm to solve the problem, it can be solved by the computer. So if you can describe the problem in the, in the notation of Turing machine, it is solvable by computers. So computer got a great reputation you know, then you got algorithms, they are precise, they are good, they do what they are supposed to. Then you have programming languages, you have uh, software engineering, then you got a distributed computing when we could use more processors. And, and there's all this, uh, actually, a computer science evolve. Then from a little uh, uh, concrete application, we uh, extend the... the the area of application to the people. Now we are processing actually people. It's not only that we are processing some, some phenomenon, and we are even processing the whole society, where from this input processing output, we got a loop processing uh, with controlling something which is in the middle of the loop. And nowadays we have in the loop, we have individuals, we have the whole society, or we have an industry process. This is what digitalization is all about. Digital transformation is when you control, when you mix the, the technology with certain phenomenon, and then uh, you have it in the processing loop. And uh, of course, when you have this, then, then you have also some consequences of this. So just I, I will here put some of the major technologies that made them possible. And you know all these, those are the major topics nowadays that you get projects, that you get finance to work in blockchain technology or artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, and so on. So I just uh, won't uh, talk more about this because you, you know, and there could be a, a separate uh, talk about any of these groups. Artificial intelligence is on the front, of course. And I'm very suspicious, me personally, about in artificial intelligence. It's been a little bit overestimated, though it has a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, results. We have to be, keep on skeptical, but I'll mention this a bit later. So uh, what really makes it possible, if you ask me, then it's mass data collection. If you want to have a society in the loop, you need to have information about society. So you get it from surveillance cameras, you get it from the smartphones, you get it from the smart cities, from the TVs. You know, when you have a smart TV, you're giving up some information. You should be aware of this. And then we have an IoT. IoT is at one side. You connect anything with anything, but also these little things that you care, they're collecting information, and they are sending this information somewhere. So it's, we are getting really uh, uh, very much uh, wired. So again, uh, when we want to think uh, who should be ready, why, when, and after all, is technology ready? Uh, well, I guess everyone has to be ready, from uh, directors, bankers, politicians, to us. And why? Because it's coming, because it is not a natural force. And my cheese is that it's coming because it's a business plan. That's why it's coming. And when it will come? Is it yesterday? 
Is it already here? Well, I guess it's still coming, <laughs> so it's not here. But maybe tomorrow. Uh, and uh, why it is not already here? Because I suspect that many of us are not ready, including technology. So if you look to the, let's say, Horizon 2020 program, they are actually, uh, for the next year, they ask you to submit projects when you will also include a little bit of social impacts and public uh, uh, issues. But basically, uh, what, what, they, uh, what they are asking for is blockchain technology, data analytics, and this is for the next year. So it seems that we still have to do research in these areas. So don't worry. I mean, uh, there's still, still to be, uh, things to be worked out. So when, when we think about digital uh, transformation, we can, and it's usually like that, you know. Uh, you, someone asks you for an opinion, you say, okay, should I be positive or negative? Yeah, let's be positive first. And uh, if you look to what uh, others are saying, there are a lot of investment, uh, trillions of dollars for the next year, and uh, the future commerce and uh, the cognitive uh, methodologies and artificial intelligence. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of investment there, so things will be happening, definitely. And business, it's really changing the business, and it's affecting, and I, I mean, I shouldn't really, because I'm not an expert for business, but if the business has said, okay, I want that, I want that someone gives me a business plan, and I'll follow it, and they earn money, okay, why not? So there are a lot of good things happening there. Nowadays, for example, you get from Google a service so that if, if Starbucks, uh, that's why the question is, Starbucks want to open a, a coffee shop, they just got it from their anal an 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 analytics uh, and then they open it and they expect that they will, on this location, they will get a very good turnout. That's fine. If they think so, that's okay. And usually they might be right as well. So. There's a whole chain of businesses is really supported by, by, by this. And what usually go, uh, goes with digital transformation is this word disruption. And what does it really mean is that, for example, Amazon, who is really starting with selling books, then they went to the e-book. That was kind of uh, cutting your own head, hand and then trying something else. But then they earn money on this. So you have to really change things in business. You have to be brutal and you see, okay, this thing is not making money, but this is making money. You have to change completely. And technology somehow helps you in this. And Google Venture is another, uh, where they're using analytics to, to, to somehow uh, support investments and so on. So those are some examples you can find more. I'm not sure. Okay. In finance, I mean, there's now a big deal with blockchain, and it's really very interesting to see what is going on there. Because in finance, if you apply digital technology, you may even question the very existence of the banks. Who needs banks? If we can do everything uh, with, uh, with, with Bitcoin, so we can somehow lend money, use money, spend money, we don't need banks at all. I mean, that's the tricky thing, you know. Are, are banks ready for digital transformation in that respect? I doubt. But, I mean, we could do this. Again, it could be a, a separate talk, and I won't talk about blockchain and, and finance, but it's a very interesting thing. In governments, as I said, I mean, we all know there's a lot of good examples of, of, of good applications. In industry, uh, I mean, it's really a consensus. Uh, we had three, this big rev <laughs> revolution in, in industry now is coming, the fourth one, when we don't have only automatization, but we have interconnections and we have IoT, and, and then uh, they expect that the manufacturing and production will be somehow completely uh, faster and better and more efficient. So let's look and see, probably. This is a, a, a good example of it. In the healthcare, it's amazing. I mean, there's really, when you see how the technology is helping disabled people, I would say this is the best what technology can do now, nowadays. It really can help a lot. And I think uh, most of these examples 
uh, when you see the hospital nowadays, you don't know whether you are in some technical laboratory or are you in the hospital. So what the technology is, is doing for the hospitals and for the medicine and for the healthcare is really amazing. And I think we should all be proud to be in, in somehow in, in developing of this technology when we look to this uh, application domain. And the well-being now, actually, we, we, there is a trend to somehow support this smart living when we can optimize our use of energy and we can also self-optimize. And there's a lot of also good examples there. We should be aware of, of, of this. Uh, in the media and entertainment, this kind of uh, personalization and contextualization of the media is also a very positive thing. Now we can get involved, we can uh, hear what we are interested in, so there's a lot of good things there as well. Uh, but also now the guys coming here, uh, what, what is a little bit tricky is that the technology is so good that you can have a person saying something and then you can project this into the face of your choice and then you can somehow make a false statements easily or you can abuse, there was a, uh, but again, uh, uh, there was an, on, a, on the music business, there were some other abuses. So you see, there are also good things, but there are also kind of uh, negative things. So, so we have to be uh, also careful and let's see what is negative in this, uh, what is possibly negative. Uh, so, First thing that is the first victim of, of digital transformation in society is the privacy, privacy law. So now we, they, nowadays we see even that the European Union um, brought this law and now we all have to click somewhere to accept something and to say that we did something. So it's a typical thing when you see how the politics are solving the problems. Now you have to accept what is going on. Before that they were doing this anyway. Now, nothing changed actually. It's only that they tell you they're doing this. But you, you, you have to... to click to continue and no one is reading this again, so I would say it's not a big deal, but, but it's at least something is happening. Uh, but there is another thing which I want to pay your attention, really, is about a lot of digital uh, cognitive biases that we have. And I think that, that th this is one of the very, very negative things which is going on nowadays in society. And we have all, uh, or many people have uh, completely wrong opinions or, or about computers. So when we look to the digital processing, it's speed, it has unlimited memory, it really goes with algorithmic processing. So it was for years, and we know computers are reliable and intelligent as a result of these many, many tens of decades of years of, of good use of computers. Now we got sensors processing, we got artificial intelligence, we got predictive analytics, and we can even, uh, we hear more and more often on the television, computers can solve unknown problems. I really heard it on the television a lot of times. Computers can solve unknown problems. There are problems we are not aware of, but they will solve it. I mean, it's really that I start thinking, what is going on? First of all, when we talk about algorithmic processing, computers are not intelligent. They are reliable in this part of, of, of the processing, but they are not intelligent. They are stupid machines repeating the same procedure again and again. If the algorithm is okay, they'll do the very good things. And the sensor processing and artificial intelligence, I mean, they cannot solve unknown problem, actually. They can figure out correlation. This is what predictive analytics is good for. But causalities are somehow remain hidden. So what predictive analytics, big data, artificial intelligence, what they can do, they can really figure out some, some, some relations but no one knows really what is the solution. And this is a tricky thing, because computers, we thought computers are exact, but the neural networks, data mining, predict predictive analytics, I mean, they are not exact. We should be aware of this, just that. Then we have a humans in the loop. And actually, I don't know whether they're always good for individuals, you know, especially if you have uh, the big systems run uh, with predictive analytics, with statistical methods. They are good for the big global companies, but they are not necessarily good for, for, for individuals. Also, we think they are free of charge, as most of them are. But actually, the price 
is our personal data. And it's not a little price. When you see how much money they earn, I mean, those data are precious. We are giving them for free like, you know, it's nothing. And we should be aware, at least when you give your data, you should ask money for it. I mean, they should pay us for using smartphones, really. I mean, if you see how much money they earn on this. So when we think about these disruptions, we see that disruptions are really everywhere. It changes the way things go. Uh, and actually positively on many, many domains. But there are also tricky things. In business, I have my suspicions, but it's not so harmful. I mean, you invest money, you want to get money, this is business. You, you can do more or less whatever you want. In finance as well, in industry also. I mean, whether you produce it, optimize things, or, or use robots, whatever, if it is good for, for production, why not? But when we come to governments, to the healthcare, for the well-being, I mean, those are the tricky issues. Those are the persons involved. And we have to be careful. And uh, we have to think twice, you know, what, is the, what are those systems doing to us? When we think about disruption in the negative, uh, uh, from the negative point of view, when we look to our environment, we think e-vehicles are really something great. It's good for... for for society, for the nature, and so on. We should all these gasoline-driven cars should go, go away. But actually, no one really examines if we were all driving e-vehicles, who will produce this electrical energy? Is it then also good for us? Is it good enough? Are we saving energy, or are, do we have green energy, or we have to... I mean, there should be more analysis to this. And you see the famous Tesla car was sent in the orbit uh, last year, was it this year or last year, just as a commercial for e-vehicles. I mean, you, you see the guy who is making the e-vehicles something which should be somehow ecological, should be good for, for environment. Uh, just to advertise this car, it was circling the earth. And imagine what is the damage to the environment made to somehow put this car there. And I guess the next million cars will, will produce less, le, le, uh, um, would pollute less than this, this single event. So you see that the, you are kind of doing good things, but actually <laughs> you are doing disastrous things. And uh, if you look to the, what is going on with hum, 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 uh, hum, humanities, well, I would suggest you to read this IEEE Technology and Society Journal. It's a really very good one. Uh, you can see the, the somehow both sides of the medals there. Uh, you see in the Britain, now we are here, there is a Ministry for Loneliness. I don't know whether you're aware of this, those people living in, in Britain. But their people are getting lonely and governments are realizing that. And one of the reasons is the digital transformation, or the first steps in, in this digital transformation. Or you see statistics that uh, uh, the, the somehow relation of using social networks and having real friends. I mean, the things are dropping down. I mean, th these with real friends with the use of social networks. So really, uh, social networks disrupt social behavior in the negative sense. And we should be aware of this. If we would somehow have a good balance, you know, being online and sleeping or using social networks for the things which are not ruining our physical social contacts, that would be something that we all have to work on us. So uh, digital transformation also disrupts knowledge. You know, there's this infoxication uh, uh, term, which means that, you know, uh, when you are online so much, you're actually ruining your intellectual curiosity, you can find out everything on the Google. Why, sh why, why should you learn anything? You just go to the Google and see what is going on. I mean, the thing is that try to find explanation for some difficult process on the Google or on Wikipedia, and you see you won't understand it. I mean, difficult things cannot be explained on the, on the, on the Wikipedia. That's why we still have uh, <laughs> academic uh, work and we, we have students and professors to teach them difficult things because you can't find them easily on the internet. Otherwise, you, you can say we, 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 won't, we, we don't need them. So anyway, there's a lot of these info negative issues. Like there is an info paradox, which means that the more information you get, the less you know. 
And this is really something which is, uh, looks paradoxical, but th th it, it is so. If you have a person who is only looking to the internet, being online all the time, can find any information. I mean, the person doesn't know a thing. You can find an information, but the knowledge is, is, is somehow uh, missing. Infoganda is another thing which happens very often. You know, it's information and propaganda together. So, or infotainment, you know, you get news often as a kind of entertainment. So you get some information uh, somehow leaked through the entertainment. So we got a lot of manipulation with the, with the public opinion, with the individual opinion and so on. And the infosphere is actually, we are getting to the, by the way, those are the, the last two terms are from the uh, philosopher uh, Luciano Floridi, who somehow tried to describe the, the, the changes uh, and saying that, like, we need biosphere as a biological species. We also need an infosphere as a digital transformed species. And then we are getting information organisms more than biological organisms. So uh, we have to deal with all these new issues and see uh, what what are we going with this technology and how can we uh, use it in a, in a positive way. So now you see that uh, also uh, digital transformation disrupts uh, creative thinking if you rely so much on predictive analytics. And uh, now you said most of you will uh, say that I know better where to place coffee shop than, than Google. And I would say yes, of course, you know better. But uh, if you have a global player who will put at your village or at your neighborhood, uh, put a coffee shop to ruin all your local coffee shops. Then probably Google will tell them what to do, where to do, because you won't tell them. So, I mean, a, there, there, there are tricky things there, but predictive analytics is good for, for marketing, for, for problem solving, for decision making. But imagine when you, when you are diagnosing in, in a medicine, you know, you can't use statistical method, methods to diagnose for the individual case. Because with predictive analytics, with statistics, you, you, for the government or for the health care, you have a very useful information when you apply all these statistical methods. But on the individual level, I mean, even the 10% mistake is a huge mistake. So also, uh, it disrupts our autonomy as well as we are getting, as the things getting autonomous, we are getting less autonomous. So just to conclude, uh, there are a lot of uh, negative issues now which I mentioned, and uh, I want to sem somehow mention some uh, positive ones. Digital enabled technology, ICT, that's us, that's we, I mean, we, 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 our work is not endangered. We are asked for to do things. So we shouldn't worry for our jobs. There is a lot of work for us in the future. We should be happy. What is needed, really, is that, and all, 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 very often the, the, we forget that we should work across disciplines. We should consult also the social sciences, uh, even philosophers, when we are mixing when we are placing the men in the processing loop, we have to include the others to, to somehow consider what we are doing. So, if you want to think how to overcome negative Im impacts, I can give you a shortcut for this. I mean, really a shortcut. Try to think about living without electricity. Can we do something? So, you should, do you have a plan D? D as a plan for digital transformation. If you don't have you should have one, because we are confronted with this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Silvecia. I will try and pronounce it once more correctly. Great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yeah, nice to see what it touches upon, right? All the digitalization, all the things we have to take into consideration. Of course, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. I'm going to you, and then I'll We'll see if some of the things he said, if you agree with or disagree with. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for, uh, well, I missed half of it, but <laughs> I got the idea of it. I hope so you saw the better part. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got two quick questions. So regarding to electric cars, of course, it's a great thing. But, you know, mainly we generate electricity anyway uh, using uh, 